Good morning and welcome to Great Basin National Park in eastern Nevada. Nevada's only national park um, up here at a little over 10,000 feet right now. And our adventure for today is hiking to Wheeler Peak, which is a little over 13,000 feet. Should be the state's highest point, but it is beaten out slightly by a high point right on the California border. Uh, just by like, you know, less than a hundred feet or so. Um, but we're going to go on a little adventure together. Thanks for joining me this morning, geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, happy to be here. And this is one of the signature landmarks of this national park. So we're going to take a hike up. We'll stop along the way and look at some cool geology and scenery. And so let's uh, head on over to the trailhead, check out our little map. Looks like we got a couple other folks out for a morning adventure as well. And then we'll make our way. So it looks like we've got uh, 8.6 miles round trip, almost 3,000 feet of elevation gain to get to the summit. Um, a good chunk of it will be above tree line. So good idea is to get up there early. Yesterday there were some thunderstorms in the afternoon, so we want to beat those. So. Here's our trail up through the beautiful aspen trees. So we'll just start heading out and I'll be sure to stop whenever I see something of interest and we'll enjoy this little trip together. Thanks for joining me. Getting a little closer to tree line here and it's a really beautiful grove of aspens in this section. If you look, you'll see a lot of the aspens have uh, bent bases at the trunk where it meets the ground and that's an indication of a mass wasting process known as creep. So basically along this slope um, the water and moisture in the soil when it freezes especially at night when it's like more of a daily process when it freezes um, of course when water freezes it expands so the soil expands upwards a little bit but it expands upwards perpendicular to the slope and then in the day when that ice in the soil thaws a bit uh, it moves straight down and so because it's freezing and expanding perpendicular to the slope but then thawing and uh, dropping vertically straight back down towards the earth uh, that's an overall net movement in this case down to the left so down slope so it's small on a day-to-day -day basis how much uh, movement actually takes place probably just a few millimeters but because you can get so many days up here of that freeze-thaw process in the soil over time, it becomes much more uh, accentuated and you end up with these curved tree trunks, sometimes called pistol butt trees because it looks like the end of a pistol. Um, so if you're ever out looking at property in the mountains and you see that characteristic with the trees, uh, that could be a sign that you've got some slope instability and you may want to think twice about building a home there or at least consider some engineering solutions perhaps of course if the slope movement is rapid enough then the tree can't keep pace uh, and ends up just being kind of pushed over or falls over uh, and dies but these trees look like they're doing pretty well good size aspens in here um can't quite see the summit through the trees almost. Might be able to see a little better up here. So I think the trail up ahead will cut back up to the west and then we'll be on the ridge line proper where we should be able to get some good elevation gain. I'll probably be breathless at various times during the video. Remember I'm over 10,000 feet so Doing my best. Okay, well, we'll see you 
a little bit further up the trail. Interrupting our geology for a little biology. Cute little deer right here along the trail. Just getting some breakfast. They appear to be quite used to people, given that I'm that close. So the trail has turned to the north now. I think there'll be one more switchback that'll turn it back to the south. And then it's pretty much straight south up the ridge to the summit. Hoping for some spectacular views of the basin and range, which is what this area is known as to geologists. These alternating north-south mountains and valleys that define most of Nevada, parts of Eastern California and Western Utah, all caused by crustal extension as the continent, this part of the continent was um, stretched in an east-west direction. The upper crust, which is brittle, responded by breaking in faults that dropped valleys down and pushed mountains up. So, onward and upward. All right, friends, here we are a little hurt further up the mountain. I taped a segment a while back, but I just checked and somehow it didn't record, so I screwed something up there. Um, we're near the summit. We're at about 12,000 feet. Got another 1,000 feet to go. Uh, view off to the west. Um, there's a wind farm down there in the Snake Valley. Let's swing around to the north. I could probably walk up over here and give you a little better view. Um, and we're well above tree line, so trees, not enough soil, heart conditions are too harsh for the trees to really thrive here. There's just some small bushes and grasses and flowers. Uh, I believe that's Stella Lake down there. Uh, looking back down, now we're looking to the east uh, off the peak and then back up towards the summit. So uh, the most of the hike has been in this type of rock we see here. It's a very hard rock, somewhat uh, sugary in texture. Uh, in places you see there's larger particles in it, but mostly it's sand size. And these are actually uh, quartzites. So these are sandstones that have been uh, squeezed together, compacted. Um, there's really two types of quartzites. There's metamorphic quartzites called metaquartzites where they've been um, completely recrystallized by heat and pressure. And then there's orthoquartzites, which is a where a sedimentary sandstone has just maybe been buried and compacted so that the quartz grains are, are mostly fused together. Notice we can still see um, bedding so we can still see the lines of the beds from when this uh, sand was laid down and in places you can see um, cross beds in it as well this rock would have all accumulated along the edge of ancient North America during the Cambrian um, so a lot of your lower to middle Cambrian units in Western North America are sandstones or quartzites depending on what's happened to them. Here in this part of the west these Cambrian units get buried by literally uh, tens of thousands of feet of other sedimentary units so with all that load sitting on top of them they end up becoming quartzites. Um, and in places there's beds that are uh, more like a conglomerate. As you can see here these particles of quartz, these pebbles of quartz there, just indicating higher energy events when the sand was being deposited. Remember that at the time of the Cambrian, there wasn't any land plants. So when there was erosion on the continents, 
with water and floods and streams, gravity, uh, that move the stuff pretty quickly and efficiently with a lot of energy. So we'll go up this last pitch and hopefully the next little segment will be from the summit. Well, we made it. We are at the top of Wheeler Peak in Nevada, in Great Basin National Park. A view along the crest of the Snake Range to the, to the south. And boy, from up here, I can't think of a better place to really get a sense of the, not just the vastness, but the topography of the basin and range. You know, you just have these big mountains and these valleys and more mountains and valleys seems to go on and on forever um, this is our view more or less to the west i'll be heading that or east i'll be heading that way later today and then our view to the north here uh down here a little hard to see but this big canyon down here that was the site of uh, nevada's only glacier at least a few years ago the you know, some number of years ago there was a glacier there, and now I think it's pretty much all melted, and the only thing that remains is a, a rock glacier, so um, a ice that exists uh, in the rocks. It's not exposed at the surface, but it's in the big broken talus and blocks of rock. Um, at one point there was a glacier here as well. You can see this lovely cirque, this bowl-shaped depression, uh, the narrow knife-edge ridges the Urets. Um, there's a nice pyramid-shaped peak over here, actually called Pyramid Peak, um, as well. And we can see mostly looks like it's quartzite, but then further out here we get a lighter colored unit. I think that's the Pole Canyon limestone that overlies uh, the quartzite here. Um, and the dominant process here up in this high part of the mountain range would be frost wedging and rock fall. So at this extreme elevation and altitude, um, the water, the snow melt and the rain that gets into fractures in the quartzite, uh, when it freezes, it expands and that busts apart the quartzite, breaks it apart and then sets it up for um, mass wasting processes for it to slide or break and fall off of the cliffs. So you can see these just big huge talus slopes here where the this mass wasting and frost wedging process has really uh, taken hold. Uh, looking further down we can see tilted beds of Pole Canyon limestone. So what we have essentially here is um, limestone tilted down to the east or to the right here. Uh, there's a layer of shale, which doesn't show up as well in the um, trees here. And then we get into these quartzites here. So we've got the Cambrian quartzites, the shales, the limestones, and that progression, that sequence is a um, classic sequence we see in the Cambrian, which indicates that sea level was rising, going from uh, sands along the coastline to offshore muds to form the shales and then ultimately to the carbonate rocks uh, the limestones themselves get a little view here uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you the grind up here to the top was was hard <laughs> um, there were places where there was a little veneer of frost on the rocks and so it was a little slippery had to stop a lot, catch your breath, just really, really steep um, and tricky uh, getting up here, but we made it. Good work, team. Uh, let's go down just here a bit, get a view into this huge cirque where the glacier was and where we have this rock glacier here now. Pretty big drop off here, so we'll need to be careful. 
think if we walk over here there's a nice stable platform we can look down from but yeah um 13,063 feet is the I think the official elevation of Wheeler Peak and it only is a second to boundary peak by about 70 feet or so a fairly small amount um, let's go over here a little better spot and we had quite a snow pack this year so there's still some snow clinging to some of these protected faces even though it's already almost mid-September get down a little bit further okay this is probably as far as I want to go oh yeah great view there uh, looking down to where the glacier was here in this Zurich faces more or less north so you can see how this would be an ideal location for snow to accumulate over time eventually become uh, ice and then as that ice became massive enough it started to flow down the valley uh, under its own weight um, and eventually that ice and the sediment entrained in the ice gouged out this valley this canyon into these very hard resistant quartzites um, now of course as we said the, the glacier is pretty much gone there's just a few snow patches down here but this lobe at the bottom that uh, is just rock you might be able to see some kind of flowing lines in it that's the rock glacier so that's the part that is still somewhat moving a little bit but there's no ice at the surface the ice is all in uh, under the rocks there so in between those rock particles at depth is, is ice and the rocks act as an insulator to keep that ice frozen year-round so an example of a, a formerly glaciated terrain that is now um, just become this sort of vestige of, of what it once was but but it's still s slightly influenced by the the movement of ice but we can see that this rock glacier is pretty small and won't be probably too much longer if the if the climate keeps going the way it does uh, and it might be gone completely so I believe this peak's called Doso Doyabi probably butchered the pronunciation but just a subsidiary peak over here with the well bedded prospect mountain quartzites go for one more view over here and then I've got a full itinerary today out in the uh, western part of Utah so we're gonna hit some more exciting geologic locations and do some more videos so hopefully you're enjoying this great view of Wheeler Peak the top of the Snake Range in Great Basin National Park in eastern Idaho just some of the great views up here and yeah thanks for joining me on this little adventure geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, hope you liked hiking up here with me today and some of the great geology we saw good scenery um, if you're able to there's a like share subscribe those things are always helpful there's donate button on the banner of the home page there's a thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer and the video descriptions also have uh, a PayPal link where you can donate if you'd like to. But we'll go ahead and sign off from the beautiful Cambrian quartzites and lofty alpine scenery here at Wheeler Peak in Great Basin National Park.